Hey guys, so in the last video, we created a React application, which was a client for a GraphQL API. So a React application was able to make queries like this to our API and display the content. So in this tutorial, we're going to extend upon this and allow a React application to be able to send mutations to our API. And in GraphQL, mutations allow us to change data. So we're going to be changing this available field with our React application. So let's get started. Uh, I'm kind of following along with this tutorial that is provided by Apollo. Um, so we're going to use this. So to start off with, we need to import mutation. The same as we imported query here, except it's mutation. And now we need to change our mutation to serve our purpose of changing the availability of books. So our mutation it's just going to be called edit book and this is coming from our graphql server uh, where we have this mutation called edit book so we have edit book and instead of type it takes an id which is an integer and um, so we need to say int this exclamation mark just means it's required and we also need to provide another parameter called available which is a boolean and again it's required and then our mutation again is edit book which takes an id and our variable is going to be called id and available and our variable again is going to be called available and what we want back from the server is the id and available as well cool so that's our mutation route. We're going to change the name to change availability. So the next thing we need to do is use this mutation inside our React render function. So in the example provided by Apollo, um, they're using this mutation component and we're going to do the same thing, which we imported at the top. So for us, this is going to go inside where we're mapping over the books, like here. We need to change this to change availability and then we're providing these parameters so add to do is going to be the name of our function that we're going to call and um, we're going to call this change availability just so it's more suitable and then the callback function gets data as a parameter so now let's just fix our indentation a bit and we're also going to be returning a div instead of just this one um, piece of text we're going to return a div and close the div here and now inside this div as well as this text we're going to add a button and we're just going to say change availability if we save that we also need to close out these brackets and close out the mutation tag so to close out the brackets, first of all, um, like that, and then the mutation tag. And if we save that, we shouldn't have any er errors in the browser. So yeah, now we have this button, um, which says change availability. And for now, if we click it, nothing's gonna happen. So we need to add an onclick handler. So button onclick is going to equal an anonymous function. takes an event as a parameter and we want to prevent the default of that event and now we want to call this function which we defined here change availability and this is where we're going to pass in our parameters um, which we defined here so we need to pass in an id and available so the way you do that you have to wrap it inside an object called variables and we're going to have id which is going to be the book.id and available which is going to be the inverse of the current book.available so if we save that everything should work we go back to the browser refresh we click change availability and something's wrong so let's see what's going on So it looks like we spelt one of our variables wrong. Um, 
so I do this should be ID so saving that and refreshing everything should work now if we click change availability you can see it changes the availability of the book and if we refresh the page this survives and we can also check in our GraphQL server in graphical you can see it also changed here so clicking this button is sending a mutation to our API which is then changing the availability of the book so this works really well this video has been how to send mutations to your GraphQL API using a React client and we used Apollo. I hope this helped you out. If there's any videos you'd like to see, please let me know in the comments. Subscribe if you'd like to see more videos like this and I'll see you next time.